Uh, I'm Gülsüm Alacaoğlu. I am PhD candidate at Rowan University. Uh, I am presenting the paper on behalf of our team. Uh, outline as follows. I'll talk about introduction and related work briefly. Then I'll talk about data and methodology. And I'll conclude the presentation with results and conclusion. Uh, there are many different forms of malicious applications uh, present in the highly connected software environment of the current technological world. Uh, malicious applications are constantly being developed and distributed to extract information from or damage computers and networks. So the classification of malicious applications is an ever-evolving problem. Uh, Signature-based, behavior-based, and specification-based techniques are commonly used to detect malware. Signature-based techniques uh, maintain a database of signatures and uses them to determine if a software is malicious by matching the malware to the signature kept in the database. These, data, these techniques are fast and require less computational resources. However, uh, they fail to detect unknown and new malware. Behavior-based techniques analyze various features, such as source or destination of malware, types of attachments, and other countable statistical features. It can detect both known and unknown malware, but uh, requires more computational resource like memory and CPU time. Specification-based detection is actually a behavior-based detection approach that tries to overcome disadvantages of other techniques. Uh, researchers have employed data mining and machine learning techniques and obtained good performance in malware detection and classification with high accuracy. These methods provide reliable and accurate results, especially for classifying metamorphic malware. Metamorphic malware indicates itself with different sequences in various environments, but it must demonstrate the same behavioral features in all environments. Hence, most, use, most methods use behavioral features for malware classification and detection rather than uh, structural features. API call sequences can provide considerable information about the behavioral features of malware. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It is the software intermediary that delivers a request to the server and then relays a response back to the client. For example, when you log on to the, any app or ask a question via a browser, you are actually making an API call. Uh, in this study, we proposed two different approaches to classify the type of malware based on its API call stream. The study, the study presented both binary and multiple classification problems. We used a public Windows API call data sets with eight class malware for the experiments. We used one dimensional convolutional neural network by mapping API call streams as categorical vector and TFIDF vectors and compare the results uh, with the other classification algorithms. Here are the highlights. Uh, as I said, we used two different approach. We conducted both binary and multi-class classification. And besides, uh, we developed a visual approach to understand the patterns of the API calls by overall and malware data type. Malware type, sorry. Uh, related work, uh, since the volume of malware being spread has had rapid growth, many studies have been carried out to analyze and detect malware automatically. There are three major approaches for malware detection based on analysis type. Statistic, which is uh, actually code analysis, dynamic is uh, behavioral analysis, and hybrid analysis. Zhao Feng et al. conducted a binary classification through dynamic analysis by using random forest and LSTM methods. They achieve 96.7% accuracy score. Han et al. used hybrid analysis method and achieved 94.4% accuracy with random forest. They also examined uh, the effect of sequence length on measuring time. Uh, there are some studies that use text-based analysis by using engrams. 
yazı at all created a Windows API call dataset, which we used in this study. They carried out their analysis as binary classification and used LSTM methods. They achieved 97.5% accuracy. Uh, the Windows malware API called datasets is a public malware dataset containing 7,107 samples of eight classes. Uh, these classes are adware, backdoor, dropper, dolander, trojan, spyware, virus, and worms. Uh, for these data, data sets, API calls represent a system call on the Windows operating system occurring during the runtime of the malicious file. This data set does not include benign samples. The bubble plot created by Tableau shows the most frequent API calls per class. The labels in the bubbles represent the API calls, and the size of each bubble indicates the average instance that contains the related API call. Uh, for example, get a scene key state is the most frequent call for spyware, worms, trojan, and backdoor. Uh, methodology for categorical analysis. Uh, each sample was comprised of a list of API call, system API calls. Uh, in order to reduce the dimensionality of the data, we reduced all call streams to their first 2000 API calls. Uh, the data sets contain 278 unique API calls in total. These unique API calls may be repeated in the API call stream. Each unique API call was encoded into a categorical vector. As seen in figure, the API call LDR load DLL was mapped to 133 and API call LDR get procedure address was mapped to 132 according to their position in alphabetical order. Uh, for each unique API call, one was placed in the vector's index corresponding to the that call and the rest of the vectors was set to zero. Additionally, uh, a padding vector was created as a categorical vector. This padding vector allows equalizing the API call streams of different lengths. Uh, the window nature of the one-dimensional convolutional neural network layer helps to capture information in the sequential aspects of the system API calls. The first layer of the current of the network uses convolutional filters to create a feature map from an input API call stream. Uh, this layer uses use, uh, 64 filters with uh, relu activation function. The following two layers flatten the generated feature map using uh, mean pooling on segments of LAN to within the generated feature map. Uh, pooling is used to gra gradually decrease the dimensions of the attribute representations. Uh, the next layer is a standard feedforward layer in a deep learning architecture, which transforms the generated feature vector using relay activation. The final layer then uses uh, soft, softmax activation to classify. Uh, tech methodology for text-based analysis. Uh, we use uh, text-based analysis uh, by using engrams. Uh, engrams are sequential series of words or terms in an ordered sequence. In this research, engrams can be created from a moving window of API calls along the call streams in the data sets. We use uh, 10 grams in this study. Uh, to parse API call streams, we model call streams to represent each n-gram as n words, where n in, is the position of the API call. These identified vectors were translated to term frequency inverse document frequency vectors. Term frequency is used to calculate the number of times a term is in a document. Inverse document frequency is a measure of information provided by words. Uh, IDF assigns a value to the word according to their rareness. If a word is frequent, then IDF assigns less weight. And if a word is infrequent, the more weight is assigned. Uh, results for categorical analysis. Uh, we utilize 80 train test bits of uh, API call stream data. The proposed CNN model has achieved an accuracy of 
91%. We compared uh, our algorithm with random forest logistic regression, support vector machine, naive bias, and uh, KNN algorithms. Uh, the algorithm that performed the most competitively with CNN was uh, random forest, which achieved an accuracy of 89.88%. Uh, a comparison of our model and the existing classification algorithms is shown in left figure. We, right figure, sorry. We observed that naive bias algorithm that has the lowest accuracy and F1 score. Uh, for KNN, an increase in the number of neighbors affected accuracy scores adversely. Uh, the confusion matrix for CNN shows that uh, each malware has high true positives. Uh, when using TF-IDF feature extraction, uh, CNN outperformed with 91% uh, accuracy with uh, decision tree classifiers. Uh, Adabus decision tree performed the best uh, among the other algorithms, and multilayer perceptron has the worst accuracy score. Uh, this table presents the overall comparison in terms of class accuracy for the two approaches. Uh, when comparing uh, CNN between TFIDF vector and categorical vector, the highest class accuracy varied depending on, on the uh, type of malware. Uh, the highest accuracy scores are highlighted in bold, and the second uh, best scores are underlined for each type of malware. Uh, specifically, the CNN performed the best at classification of malware type. Uh, visualization. Uh, to analyze API call streams, we presented a visualization tool by using D3, a JavaScript library. We considered API calls as a time series and <clears throat> examined their features. Uh, we determined length, uniqueness, and variability features to investigate malware behaviors. <clears throat> Uh, length is the number of entries in a time series record and unique instance number of unique entries in a time series record and variability number of times in a time series where entry n differs from entry n plus one divided by uh, length of the time series minus one. We created an encoder view to see unique API calls and their assigned integer values which is used in mapping. The encoder for the time series data can be used to inspect it for any errors as well. Uh, activated button, buttons uh, returns yellow color, and these matrix buttons can be activated uh, simultaneously. This helps to analyze data comprehensively. Uh, this figure shows the land uniqueness and variability matrix for each malware. Uh, variability matrix indicates that the lander and Edward other have different variability among other types of malware. This justifies that other has the best accuracy score with both approaches of feature extraction under the CNN because it has lower than usual variability. We also add model performance button to reach confusion matrix of a uh, convolutional neural network. And the tool has ability to analyze any time series data with similar structure. The visualization will help users to view various attributes in determining the model performance. Uh, conclusion, uh, to summarize, we utilize two different approaches uh, to classify malware at both binary and multi-class levels. We encoded API calls, call streams by converting them to categorical variable and uh, TF-IDF vectors. Uh, overall comparison indicated that both feature extraction approaches produced competitive performance on classification of malware. Uh, the results also suggest that the high impact feature in an API call stream is related to both call variability and call sequence. Uh, the D3 visualization tool aided in human understanding of the API call stream data. Uh, thank you for listening and any questions or suggestions. <laughs>